so far. Congressman Jim Hines of Connecticut is on the House Permanent Select Committee on Intelligence. Uh, thank you, Congressman, for being here. Are you going to vote Thanks, yes Senator. on arming and training Syrian rebels? You, you know, uh, at this point, uh, candidly, uh, I am a lean no on that issue. There are still far too many unanswered questions about the kinds of weapons that would be provided. Uh, are we going to provide man pads in such a way that civil aviation could be threatened? Who's going to be overseeing these guys? Will we have U.S. officers, uniformed or otherwise, on the ground in Syria, making sure these guys don't commit human rights crimes? And by the way, or, or, or move weapons to people we don't want to have those weapons? You know, and another question that simply hasn't been answered yet, and, and I should I should stop here and say, you know, I do support the president with respect to airstrikes against Iraq. That's a classic counterterrorism uh, mission. But with respect to these uh, rebels, there are a lot of unanswered questions. How you fight ISIS on one day and then the next day do what you've really been doing for the last couple of years, which is uh, fighting Assad. Uh, you know, you, there's one thing worse than being on one side of, the civil, of a civil war, and that's being on two sides of a civil war. And, and Congressman, did Dempsey and Hagel not answer any of those questions today? No, look, I think they're doing the best they can, and I actually think they're playing a very healthy role. A lot of us have wanted this kind of debate and opportunity to sort of see how they're thinking about it. I mean, I think uh, one of the headlines from today, of course, is, is, is important for us to remember, and that is that General Dempsey said that there would be circumstances under which he would ask the president for ground troops. Uh, and, you know, historically, these missions have crept. Now, mm -hmm. that's important for us to consider uh, as, we, as we think about, you know, where we in the last 10 years and where we think we may find and, ourselves. And Congressman, let's actually, let's take a listen to exactly that quote. This coalition is the appropriate way forward. I believe that will prove true. But if it fails to be true and if there are threats to the United States, then I, of course, would go back to the president and make a recommendation that may include the use of U.S. military ground forces. We just heard you raise that as a concern. Do you think this is giving a lot of other members pause? Um, absolutely. And look, there's two essential questions about ground troops. One is simply, uh, you know, do we as representatives of the people, are the people supportive of that, uh, given where we've been in the last 10 years? And of course, the other big question is, would they at the end of the day make the problem better or worse? Uh, you know, look where we have used our military, Afghanistan, Iraq, and Libya. And our military is absolutely first rate. But it's hard to look at the experience in those three countries in the last 10 years and say that our application of military force uh, has in the long run, in in the long run actually made us more secure uh, against groups like ISIL. And the president is also meeting with John Allen today. Uh, he's, up, of course, expected to lead this military operation. If Congress doesn't pass this Title X authorization to train these forces on the ground, do you think that the 2001 and 2002 authorizations of the use of military force will cover what the president wants to do largely? Uh, I do not believe that they do, and this is another topic that is, um, you know, important, and it's worth uh, taking it up, even as I suspect the majority of the Congress would support, again, we'd have to talk about Syrian rebels, but would support aggressive action against uh, ISIL as we undertake around the world against groups like ISIL. Um, but, you know, you really have to stretch legally to say, as the president does, that he thinks that the uh, authorization of 2001-2002 covers this. And look, this is worth getting right. You know, if we, how far will we stretch things? You know, someday when uh, a guerrilla group in Colombia has members of Al-Qaeda, now are we at war in Colombia? I mean, that may be, you know, a ridiculous example, but it's a question that we have to ask. And you're certainly not alone in saying that that is a stretch. Uh, look, one thing stood out to me today, Hegel saying very clearly that ISIS could be a threat to the homeland, not just to U.S. interests, if left unchecked. Still some careful language and caveating there, but very different tone from the president ch telling Chuck Todd just a couple of weeks ago that the intelligence doesn't suggest any credible threat to the U.S. itself, just U.S. interests. Uh, what does the intelligence suggest? Well, you know, this isn't that hard a question. Uh, the intelligence community, and they've been very clear on this, uh, does not at this point in time see uh, any plotting, any planning on the part of, uh, part of ISIL against the United States. Uh, would ISIL like to do this? Of course they would like to do this. And by the way, that's true of a dozen other groups around the world. Uh, so, you know, tomorrow that, that fact could change. Uh, none of us should be under the misapprehension that these are anything other than brutal, horrible people. The question is, you know, is what the president proposed, is that the best way to 
to address it. Are we comfortable we've got enough c commitment by the Saudis? Are we comfortable that we'll find a way to work, even if we don't admit it, with the Iranians? Uh, you know, this is, uh, there has to be a long conversation about something we all agree on, which is that these guys should go away. But that conversation has to point us to something that's actually going to work. Congressman Jim Himes, appreciate your joining, and we'll be watching what you and your colleagues vote uh, in these coming days. Thanks, Ronan. Up